Hi, Bailey here from Bradshaw Gun and Rifle. Thought I would do a quick video on the uh, CAD, some of the CAD process uh, that I use to manufacture my rifles. Uh, this particular drawing is of my side lever falling block action. Uh, I have another drawing that shows all the internal mechanism. Uh, this drawing is for the external machinable surfaces that gives, gives the action its shape. Um, this is how all of the actions start. Uh, they all end up with a, a drawing like this with, uh, with the surfaces. And it aids in consistency, obviously, but it, uh, it allows me to, to make them work in the computer, make all the parts work, uh, make the shape the way that I want it, dimensions, thicknesses, uh, gives me an idea to, you know, it's a it's much easier this way than it is to uh, actually make a model and go back and then retroactively make changes from there. So anyway, this is uh, this is the left side, obviously, and I call this the top view, but that's the way I always start is top top is the left um, if we go from to an isometric view of the action here let's look at all of it you can see that it's it's not like a solid model so you're looking at the inside of the action here this would be the the right side but it gives you a good idea of, of what I what I start with um, to generate computer for, uh, kind of, sorry CAM files, which stands for Computer Aided Machining, which is the actual code that the milling machine or the wire EDM or the CNC lathe, whichever machine I'm using at the time, which the, those read. Um, but this drawing is where everything starts here. So pause it from the rotation. This surface is actually the trough on top on top of the top tang where the cartridge will slide into the breech block. Uh, the breech block cavity is obviously here in the middle of the action. And uh, here's a view from the, if you're looking at the back end of, of where the stock will fit into the, onto the action. You can see the tang surfaces. And you'll notice that they're tapered from, from the top to the middle. And they're also tapered from the action body themselves to the rear. And using those two tapers allows the stock to lock in when, when the wood and metal make contact. As well as the, uh, the edge right here, on, on the, edge, the bottom edge of these surfaces, they will be flat. So when the stock is pushed on from the back here, this top and bottom surface there's about an eighth of an inch there that kind of indexes onto the wood itself and doesn't allow the wood to move up and down and obviously the taper side to side so once it once it goes on it kind of locks in place is uh that's the idea this does use a draw bolt the draw bolt will attach to this cross member that's between the two tangs and uh it has a little threaded sleeve that will extend back and and I've, I've just found that using a draw bolt is really the most secure way in uh, securing the stock and it certainly makes life a little bit easier if when you have a little change in humidity or you know if I ship a rifle to a really dry climate sometimes they shrink a little bit and the only thing that's needed is just to take up the slack on the draw bolt pulls it back tight into the action so so from here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll demonstrate how I draw up one of the tool paths uh, to machine a part of the action. And I'm going to draw up a tool path for the top and bottom tang. I'll draw up the top first and then the bottom. Um, it will run as one program. But if I actually did both of them at the, selected both at the same time, the cutter wastes a lot of machine time going back and forth between this dead space. It has to to uh, make a pass on the top, it'll rise up to a clearance height, traverse down to the bottom position, uh, descend in on the z-axis, which is uh, z-axis is up and down. 
and that's a slow it just slows everything down it adds a lot of machine time and time is money so we try to save it wherever we can so to start the process we go up to the toolpath tab we're going to run a surface finish program a parallel surface finish program and select the drive surfaces so it's the surface we're going to machine do the top first the next thing we're going to do is select a containment boundary which will limit where the cutter can actually go and the most important feature on this containment boundary is this highlighted line right here it's an eighth of an inch away from the back of the action and since I'm using a quarter inch cutter it doesn't allow the cutter to eat into the back of the action. If I didn't uh, put a containment boundary on, on here, the uh, the cam file tells the machine tool to move based on the center line of the cutter. So the center line of the cutter is going to cover this entire surface all the way up to the back of the action and since the center would be right here at the back of the action it would actually machine into the back of the action an eighth of an inch so we set the containment boundary an eighth of an inch away and it will actually machine a nice square uh, surface here on the back of the action just kind of as a, uh, a stopping point if you will but uh, anyway so I select my tool containment boundary yes we go to an approximate starting point down here at the end. We're going to use a quarter inch flat end mill, which uh, you can see is indicated here. Feed rate is I want seven inches a minute. Plunge rate is 0.5 or half inch a minute. Spindle speed is 1700 RPM. Clearance would be one inch. That's to start and finish the program. The cutter will move one inch above the the workpiece. Um, just as a reference, zero is the center line of the action. So if you were to split the action in half, the center of it, or the you know that that line is zero. Um, so this is one inch above the center, and the actions less than two inches thick so it will give us clearance uh, to retract we'll go with 0.85 saves a little bit of time in the uh, plunging uh, plunging is always done slower because you're descending the end mill vertically into like a uh, into the workpiece like a drill bit and end mills are not efficient drills so you want to go slow at that at that point it saves your cutter uh, and keeps chatter away and it, uh, you just have to go slow to do that but anyway we're, we'll start at 0.48 which is where the tang of these actions is roughed to and that's going to be an absolute alright here we have the step over so the cutter will make a pass and then it will step over or step sideways and I'm going to set that at five thousandths of an inch so it'll make little five thousandths zigzags. It'll go back and forth and step over five thousandths of an inch every time. It'll be at a 90 degree machining angle. And there it draws the tool path itself is in the, the light blue when I zoom in on it, we'll go down here to where it starts and make a real small little window. You can see the every little step over is five thousandths of an inch. Now the reason it isn't actually on the surface itself, if you look at it from the end, is you have to remember that with a square cutter, um, you're working with the edges of the cutter, but this tool path is the center line of the cutter. Uh, Mastercam automatically compensates for that, thank goodness. Um, so that's that's why it looks like there's a gap there. It looks like it's elevated above. 
And then when you look at it from the top view, why it's set down and away is because you have to remember that you're working with the edge of the of the uh, the cutter. So if this is the center, the actual edge of the cutter is another eighth of an inch, so it's going to clear the the surface. Hopefully, that's a clear enough explanation. We'll come down and do the bottom surface. All the parameters are already set, so we just basically select the surface. Containment boundary again. So review everything. Starting point. And there's the bottom surface. Now another nice feature with Mastercam is I can go in and simulate the machining process before I actually take the program over to the machine and cut it. Sometimes you can find some errors that uh, you, you may have overlooked. Uh, this basically creates a little block of material and we'll go up here and hit, hit play and it machines the top and then the bottom. Um, the actual rifle actions already have the center cavity removed uh, when I wire EDM the profile cuts the cuts that center out so that's not going to be there but we can get a little close-up look at it gives you an idea what the surface looks like do a little dynamic view you can rotate it around here so if we're looking at from the end here again you can you can see the the taper from the top of the action to the center and then you know from the back of the action to the very end of the tang there's the, the taper that we're looking at. Okay every, all that looks good. From here I would um, I'll come back over here to the operations manager and I'll actually do what's called post the selected operations and that is to generate the G-code file or the CAM file that the machine tool will actually read and machine the part. Uh, that's a very boring process and it's just a lot of a lot of X and Y and Z codes and if you don't understand them it's it's pretty Greek. But uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed that little overview. It's uh, a part that not everybody shows and thought it would be kind of interesting for some of you to see how these originate and some of the process to getting to the machining stage um, and of course this is just the computer side of it um, you know there's there's quite a bit that goes into you know taking a, a raw block of steel and uh, even machining it to a, a blank that I can produce an action from. It's, there's a decent amount of work just involved in that step. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time.